technique is at drop that brush. And our goal is to help non-artists become artists. Please like, subscribe, and ring the little bell. The most important thing to know is to use the correct paper. There are student grades and artist grades. And frankly, the uh, cost difference between the student grade and a artist grade, there's not that much difference, but a huge difference in the results of your painting. When people say, tell me how hard watercolor is, first thing I'm gonna ask them, what kind of paper are you using? New students will frequently bring in cheap paper, student grade paper. And they will say, well, I'm practicing. I'm going to save my good paper for um, the, when I paint better. The problem is when you are painting on cheap paper, it's hard enough to handle watercolor. But to have cheap paper too makes it almost impossible to get a good painting. What kind of paper are you using? <laughs> Comment below, please. Cheap paper buckles when it's wet. I like to use, this is called watercolor. So I like to use water. And if you use a lot of water, it immediately buckles. One of the beautiful things about watercolors are the beautiful, vibrant paints. Well, you put good paint on cheap paper and it will look dull, boring. Your paint will actually sit on top of the paper and it won't absorb. One of the major issues with cheap paper, when you layer your watercolor paint, so you do one wash and then you let it dry and you put a second wash. Now what it's supposed to, it's not supposed to move the first wash. But here's what happens with cheap paper it lifts, actually lifts that first wash and then mixes those colors together and gives you young colors, it gives you back runs, um, it just gives you grief. When I am painting a leaf, sometimes I want to scrape into that painting. When I do that with cheap paper, I actually uh, tear a hole in it, which doesn't make me very happy. Even if you get a picture that you love, over time that painting will deteriorate and it will turn yellow. Cheap paper makes it hard, so hard to control your watercolor and it looks ucky. People will say, I can't do this. It's just so hard. But really it was just the paper. So let's break down quality versus cost. Um, student grade paper for about five to ten dollars a pad. If you use cheap artist grade paper, it's called a sheet and it's approximately it's about 22 by 30. Hi. It's big. It'll give you great quality and that of that particular brand, Fabriano, will cost you about $5 a sheet. And sometimes it actually goes down to $17 for four sheets. This will make four of these. We call them quarter sheets. And a quarter sheet can be painted on both sides. That will give you eight paintings. Artist grade cheap paper is what I use. Um, it is definitely artist grade. I have paint all my paintings on it, but it isn't the most expensive and that's okay. I don't need the most expensive. I just want something that works. The student grade simply does not work with watercolor. Most beginners are not going to paint eight paintings a month unless you're very prolific and good, good for you if you are. So think about this. You've got, you go and you have lunch at Burger King. You spend more than $5 for your hamburger. So you know what? You can afford decent paper. You deserve this. At least that's my one woman's opinion. 
artist grade paper typically is referred to as sheets. Um, they are 22 by 30 inches. They are 100% cotton rag, which actually it's like um, clothing, which cracks me up. It is acid free and it doesn't ever turn yellow. Most people will use either Fabriano or uh, Arches. Arches would be called the gold standard. When you talk about watercolor being so expensive, they're normally referring to Arches. I'm encouraging you to use Fabriano. I learned on with Fabriano. To me, I believe one person's opinion, it's just as good as Arches. But you're going to find people that just, it has to be arches. And for me, I'm still working on my, my practice paper, which happens to be artist grade, but not quite as expensive as arches. Really, you want to avoid pads and blocks. Either they're really, really bad or really, really expensive. So if you do it as a block, uh, arches 300, 10 sheets for a quarter sheet is basically 50 bucks. You have an opportunity to use, to buy, let's say four sheets, which could be split into four quarter sheets, um, and that will make eight paintings. If you are buying like a, a pack, they come in normally in uh, Cheap Joe's and the link's below. Um, they get it for um, four sheets and it's someplace between $17 to $20. That will allow you to have for $17 or $20, you will actually have enough for somewhere between 16 to 30 two paintings. So one of my artist friends, who's a really amazing artist, and he says to me, I'm in actually working at the gallery, and he says to me, well, here, you like Fabriano. I'm like, yes, I do. And he said, here. Now, this is a guy who always does arches, and he was trying to get it a little cheaper, so he tried Fabriano. He says, I hate it. I just hate it. I'm like, you're giving, me, you're giving me the paper? Cool. So I go home. I pull it up. I tear it into sheets, which I will show you in a minute. I get my watercolor out, and I get everything ready. I start painting on it. And I'm like, there's something wrong with this paper. I mean, you could tell. When you're used to a uh, certain paper, it's, you know when it's cheap paper. And I'm looking at it, and I'm thinking, and I'm trying to figure out what's going on. So I pulled out a regular sheet of paper, and I pulled it out, and I'm looking. Well, I did notice that mine didn't have, the one that he gave me didn't have a deckled edge. I don't know. I'm thinking, what is going on with this piece of paper? I don't like it either. I've used Fabriano for 12 years. I have no what the problem is, but it's bad paper. And so I started looking at it, and I looked, finally looked at the watermark. And the watermark is when you have a sheet in a full size sheet at the bottom, there will actually be a watermark that says, and mine says, Artistico Fabriano. This piece of paper actually said, Studio. I didn't even know there was a student grade Fabriano. Please only buy Artistico, which is the artist grade. There will be a link below for Fabriano Artistico. Let's talk about paperweights. Um, typical paperweights are 140 and 300, though Fabriano actually has a, a 200 pound. Now, it's based upon the 140s cheaper by far than the uh, 300. So it's kind of a difference. But I'm going to show you what the difference are and why you care one way or the other. These come 
in the package. Now, you want to note, there is, it will actually say it comes in 300 grams. And sometimes it does not even say the 140. And so I was so confused when I first started. Why is it saying 300 grams when I ordered, tried to order 140? They just have a metric system and that's how they do it. 140 buckles a little. And I'm going to show you at the end, there's a couple of tips that you can fix that. Certainly, if you're using 300 weight, there's no buckling at all. It makes it, it's very easy. And if you can afford it, it's great. But I certainly would not practice on this. I would practice on my 140. If you want my opinion, 140 is fine to start. Does anybody use 300, 300 pound weight? And I'm curious as to what you're using it for. Um, at the end, I'm gonna give you some tips of why I would use 300. So let's talk about texture. There's different kinds of textures. One is rough, one is hot pressed, and this one is in between rough and hot pressed. Let's talk about each of them. Rough has a rough texture. You can feel it. It's nice for landscapes. If you're scraping your brush, if you're taking your brush and you're scraping it, it will actually have little pebbles of white showing through, which works really well with rocks and for landscapes and for water. You know, you have little, little shining lights through the water. This is beautiful. Get texture. Hot press. Hot press versus rough. Hot press is kind of glossy. There's no tooth. When you put your hand on it, it's very, very smooth. <laughs> I use it when I don't want a lot of control. So when I use, using the same brush, when I do this, it just gently moves through. And you can see the difference between, it has a much different approach and how it looks when you put the brush on. Um, I like this for people. One thing about hot, it's harder to handle your brush marks. See, and that's why I like it, because if I throw this up here, and it just kind of does its own thing, it doesn't really, it really just kind of, it, it's just weird. I can, it just, it's not like, <laughs> it's different. It handles things totally differently. This is difficult and you really can't put layer after layer after layer on this. It'll give you grief, but I like it. It's kind of fun. What I suggest, this is the middle between papers. There is hot, rough, and the middle is cold press. So cold press, um, if I use this, you can see there's a little bit of tooth. You can see that it's still wet a little bit. Here it immediately dried. And you can see this already has back runs. I like back runs, but a lot of people don't like back runs. So there's an easy way you can see this just makes it a more difficult painting to deal with. So if you're a beginner, I would really recommend cold press. Fabriano has a fourth texture, though I've never tried it, and it's called soft. And it's someplace between uh, hot and cold press. So, and they call it soft. So it's something I'm gonna check out one of these days. Maybe we'll do a video of it. So give me a comment if you've actually have used Fabriano soft, and I'd be interested to see what do you think about it. Are you aware that watercolor comes in different colors. There is natural white, which is often used for uh, landscapes, white, and um, extra white bright. It just makes your colors pop. Here we go. Now the fun stuff. I'm gonna give you some, all my favorite tricks that uh, tearing the paper. I want to show you how to cut up a sheet because you look at that, it's so big and sometimes you know if you're not sure how to do it, let me show you. 
Go back and forth, back and forth several times. And make sure that you truly um, have pushed on a little bit. So then I cut a little bit of the um, thing. Put your hand in. And you got it. So that's how you, how you care these. Then you just flip it over and do the other. Sometimes people don't know this. You know, now say if you're like, that makes you scared, you don't want to mess up the paper, you can just do this and then cut it with a pair of scissors. Is which side is the right side? <laughs> it took me a while to figure this out. So you cut these up, right? And one of them at the bottom, one of them will have the watermark. Okay, so I know that's the correct side. Now I use both, but let me tell you how you know that these ones are. And there's a little more texture on one side, that's the correct side. But in reality, it's not that different. But a lot of people don't know what the difference is. I thought that. How do you store sheet? This is actually important because we can have issues. Basically, they should be put somewhere flat, dark, um, like underneath your bed is the most appropriate thing. Um, keeping it in the plastic, okay, and close the plastic. And then, you know, I'll take these, I'll put them back into the plastic, and then when I get ready to paint, you know, I've split them up and I put it right here, and then I just pull it out and paint on one. How are you guys storing your sheets? Maybe you have some other ideas I'd love to share about. Comment below. You never need to stretch 140 pound artist grade paper. It's easily fixed. The reason why I don't care if it buckles or not a little bit is because I can take this and iron it. It's really weird, um, but it's just like your clothing. It's 100% cotton. So what you do is you actually take your, your picture so if this is your side that is your painting on, you flip it over, you can spray it. It doesn't hurt anything. I put it on cotton and I actually put a little bit of um, steam. But if that freaks you out, <laughs> you can take, you can lay your fabric here and you can put thin kind of wet towel and iron it this way. Or if say that really you don't like that either, it just makes you like, oh my God, I've painted all this work on how you could destroy it. It doesn't destroy it, but you know, just in case you're worried, you can also simply put it on books. Put a whole bunch of books on it for a day or two. Problem solved, no buckling. Are you aware that you can actually take your paper and if you hate your painting, you can actually, because this is just fabric, Basically, I can go put it in a bathtub and kind of take this and wipe off the painting. It'll have, it'll have a tone. You'll still see some colors. But then you could let it dry and paint it again. Another reason why to do artist grade paper, because you can really use this both sides, clean it up. I told you I was going to tell you why occasionally I will use 300 paper. I live in St. George, which is high desert. There is no moisture in the air. If I want to go paint outside, the minute I put water on this, it immediately dries. I mean, it takes like two minutes and it's already dried. If I use 300 down paper, get it very, 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 very wet, we'll have like 15 minutes before it dries, which is amazing. That's why I use 300. I want to discuss the difference between tape, which some people love to do tape, versus clips. All right, so when I've got water, and I'm gonna go ahead and just put water on, this ain't gonna hurt anything. This paper will actually spread. It will move. And so say I'm going to do a beautiful sunset or a, um, a sky, which is really nice. Now you see I'm putting a lot of water. This isn't me going, we're talking, I'm putting water. Can you see it? I'm really getting it in. All right, now, and then I flip it. 
This is at least how I do it. Again, because we live in a really, you may not need to do this in an area where there's moisture in the air, but here it does make a difference. It gives me a long time to play. So I can set it here. Now, I just love this. So I get this, and I do this when I'm out working, out, or painting outside. As I am doing this, over the next 10 minutes, this will expand. Now, you can see it doesn't even move. It's just totally, it's totally cool. And I can see that there's a little bump. So if I go over here, add a little water, that will get rid of it. Okay, so this is continuing to span. Now I want to see what shows you what happens when we use, if I'm using a wet and wet technique, tapes gives you a, this beautiful little white line, which is great, except if you're gonna do a wet and wet, it doesn't work very well, and I'm gonna show you why. Now I can only paint one side, right? So here you go. Now this one continues, it continues to grow. I can put a tape on it and it will simply allow it to continue to brand. And if I want to, I can take it and as it moves, if it gets grows bigger, I can just do this. Here you go, I've got this. And what happens is it starts to buckle. It takes a few seconds, but I'm over here and all of a sudden I have this huge mess because I wanted to do wet and wet and it starts to buckle. Um, so if I'm here and say I'm going to put a beautiful sky, still using the same colors, so I would come here and I can actually not even bother worried about the um, paper because it's right there, it just stays there. And so I can get a nice, beautiful, and have lots of time to play with. And you can see that lovely. And then I can come over here and I can wipe it off, which I didn't bring anything, but we'll just wipe this and then clip it. Thank you. Now, here we go. I want you to look, see what's going on over here. So I'm over here. I've got the same, the same brush. Now, I don't know if you can see this, but it's starting to buckle all over the place. So if I'm using a wet on wet, this is a problem. And I'm, I'm literally, I can still do it, but I have weird little bumps and things. And that the more wet it was, the more it gives me grief. Tape doesn't allow it to expand. It's as simple as that. You know, some people love this. It all depends upon your style. My style is normally, I do a lot of wet and wet. I get lots of juicy, ruddy, lovely uh, washes. Yes, and I say wash. Wash is, my grandmother taught me this, and that's how I say it. I know it's wrong, or at least tomato, tomato, but you know, that's how it is. Anyway, you can see this continues to buckle. This one, pretty nice. And so it does make a difference, um, but it is a, a personal preference. Okay. The reason why else I don't like tape is I wind up tearing the paper. <laughs> Maybe some people don't have this problem, but I would tear the paper. And so, you know, I pull this out and I'm like, and then I got this wash and it's a pretty paper and I've tarred the paper. But there's, somebody showed me trick, a teacher taught me this. Basically, if you pull it out, from the inside. Don't pull it this way, but pull it from the inside, you won't tear. Let's talk about boards. Now you can see that I'm using, both of these are masonite boards where with, I don't know, the white masonite. And this allows that the water doesn't go into the board. They are about, $15 at Home Depot, Lowe's, and, but they come in like these huge sheets. I have had, I bought my boards and it's lasted 10 years and I still have boards. Um, a quarter sheet and a half sheet. And I'll actually link that down below so that you guys know um, what size you would want to do. All right, another option. If you don't have a lot of money, you can actually just use a foam core um, and not really, it does, it does get 
wet and get soggy eventually, but for a little while it'll last. And you can get that down at the 99 cent store. There is another option, drawing board. Now these are great except for that when I put water onto this, it will sink into the uh, the wood and then it will it will make it buckle. So what you need to do is actually use varnish or something, spray it on, let it dry, maybe spray it on at least twice, and then you could, should be able to use that. Another option. All right, so my main one are the masonite, but I also, if I, and you can see it's dirty and kind of lucky, um, it's plexiglass. It's more expensive, but if I'm going out to paint outside, it is really light. And that's nice. You can get that cut. Home Depot and Lowe and say, this is the size that I want it. I like it. It's just as good as the this, but it's just more expensive. This is really cheap. There's some different ideas that you can use for boards. If you want to check out some different kinds of paper, Cheap Joe's has sample packs and I will link it below so that you can uh, check them out if you want to. I highly encourage you to get artist grade paper. You don't have to be the most expensive. It can be the in-between artist grade paper, but you will be much happier with what you'll do. And you're still not gonna have, it's hard to paint. It takes time, you have to be patient. You need to be kind to yourself. But I really suggest Fabriano 140 cold press, um, and there's a link below. When you're trying to paint and you think, oh, what am I doing? Drop the brush. You have a good day, and I will see you next week when we talk about brushes.